is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another Vela Pokemon League battle. Week 5, actually, this time. Versus the Quebec City Bitic and Tid. And uh, we've actually been doing really well. While we haven't had a week 4 battle, we still are actually fairly decent with two wins, one loss so far. And uh, we're going against Tid, who has a similar record at the moment. And um, Tid is a very good opponent, always has been. Um, really, really are always stressed out when I'm facing him, mainly because the way he plays. Uh, he's very meta, which means that he can definitely bring sets that are. How do you say it, calibrated to the team you're going up against? So it always becomes some of the mind games versus him. And this spell was definitely not um, any different from that. It's going to be the same thing yet again. Now, a quick rundown of what we are facing. As you guys can see, this is the sixth Pokemon he brought. Uh, his complete draft is actually. Let's see, it's Mega Scissor, Raikou, Azumarill, Necrozma, Incineroar, Hitman Top, Tangrove, Crystal, Psygod, and Chukumuku. So overall, a very strong team, and me and my co-coach Ellis uh, had a. Ellis actually re reacted that his team is definitely slower than your standard team. It definitely only has Raikou that stands out as a faster Pokemon with Psyguard of base one fifteen. Other than that, the team is naturally slower. So we should be able to bulk ourselves up fairly right and do well against this team actually. And uh, we level around with six are definitely going to make it because I have a team that is built with these Pokemon in mind. But Jolteon and Jillicent were also part of the aspect of this Wampa Battle. So were also Scissor. Uh, none of them actually made it. And uh, another Pokemon that did not win was Krogonal because, well, Mega Scissor dealing with Krogonal definitely doesn't fit the bar here. Hence, we decided to actually bring something else. So we have a bulkier Landris in. Incarnate, you know, but you know, without um, Shea Force ability with Earthquake, Fly, Soul Stance, and Rock Polish. Thing is, here he doesn't resist any Pokemon he, he has, doesn't resist Earthquake, and the few that do, like Tangro, for example, can't take a C Fly. So it's going to be my bread and butter for offensive pressure early. Como is with Fire Punch, Poison Jab, and uh, Dragon Claw with Dragon Dance. Uh, pretty standard and be able to hit anything super effectively or very well. Only Pokemon I would say that fair is possibly Necrozma. Mega Dianchi, Bolt Gear, Virion with Diamond Diamond Storm, um, Moonblast, Hidden Heart Fire, and Toxic. Uh, one thing we were living between was if we're going to have Substitute, and that may or may not have some <laughs> rough around the edge in this game, actually. Amoongus here has Sludge Bomb, it has, I do believe, Hidden Heart Fire. Um, and we have Spore, and we had a filler move, I believe, in Foul Play, in case it is the Sword Stand Scissor. Foul Play should be able to do a very fair amount of the damage. The Tauros actually just has a minimal EV spread to make sure that our speed a standard Timid in Necrozma, since that's the only relevant speeder Pokemon to have speed, since, of course, they said Raikou and Saigar can't have speed anyway, since they're base 1 and 15. So, out of that, we are actually a rash in nature with Fire Blast, Body Slam, uh, Toxic, and Iron Head. Iron Head is primarily only for Crustle in case it brought it, because Crustle actually do kind of wall Tauros if not. So it's worth keeping in mind. And my last Pokemon is Mesprit, Psychic, Hidden Bar Fire, and uh, Stealth Rocks. And the last move was something we were leveling between back and forth. I decided to go over U turn, but Healing Wish was a really strong option here to get it with the likes of Toxic. And quite frankly, I don't know still after this game which move that could have been the better choice. I will say this though, Mesprit has a rough time versus Incineroar. And that's something to always keep in mind, that Incineroar might actually be a tremendous threat to my team. Which was something I didn't necessarily reflect on going into the game. But Incineroar, due to the bulk, really just put a pressure on my team that I necessarily didn't calc for. Um, my co-coach here, Ellis, did say one thing that I think was really good about Mesprit was that my opponent's uh, Rapid Spinner and Defogger both can be hit super effectively with Mesprit with this combination. So Mesprit is rather safe to actually go for the likes of Stealth Rocks and actually go for just a super effective damage if you want to get rid of the Hazards. That said, I don't have a Hazard Remover on my own. I don't believe with the team I'm bringing that I have to because, you know, I'm <laughs> Mega Dianchian on. So, yeah, with all this said, we're going to lead off with Landers. The initial idea here is to see that since it has a Crustle, that it most likely going to try to um, go for Stealth Rock early. If that's the case, I want to whittle it down and then 
from there do the best of my abilities to make sure I can win the game early because Rosh Hashanah is my best shot considering the defensive team he has. So that said, let's of course go into the match. So for the get to go here, my opponent here is going to lead off with his Crustle, which is really good for us of course because we get what I would say the more ideal play for my advantage. So if anything here, you know, I go directly for the Earthquake, I do roughly 50%, definitely feeling that you know, it's the build that was kind of aiming for, and this is good because he has no reason not to switch out to his Tangrowth. So with this in mind, I'm actually going to go for Sword Stance directly. So we do the offensive checking really early, we definitely put him on pressure here. Since I'm going to go directly for Sea Fly, I feel he thinks he can deal with the damage I put, I will provide, but yeah. It's uh, unfortunately not there since uh, Sea Fly is a direct Oko and we get a massive lead way directly since we basically outclass Crustle, it's done for. Tangrove is defensive sec for Landers, it's done for. And Landers is looking really, really strong here. Now he kind of sent his uh, Assumeril and I felt I, I waved the option, but I'm better off actually um, risking Aqua Jet and actually go for Earthquake Annihilating it. So it's abandoned. Well, Assume real, so I guess I should be happy that you know we are more defensively, but at the same time, yeah, that's tough. So this means clear that we can range of bullet punch, and uh, I'm not gonna take my chance with that. And I do want to keep Rama Landers just in case. Uh, my Cumberdale, my Mongus is coming in, and yeah, for this point, basically, what I can do is uh, well, Fred will hit him by fire, of course, but all at the same time, I can scout the damage. And the bullet punch definitely shows me that it's more offensive than anything else. And that's going to be an issue since I don't have any way of recover. So he's going to switch out, actually go directly for Incineroar. And this is rough. Uh, I go for Spore. He's going to show me that he has safety goggles. Excellent prep my opponent. Since this will mean that Among Us is definitely outmaneuvered by this Pokemon that is Incineroar. And without Stealth Rocks, Incineroar can come in freely over and over again in front of me, and this is something I do not want to be forced to be dealing with, as the Flare Blades does, well, a fair chunk. We do wall it to some extent, and I'm going to go directly for a Dragon Dance, thinking that, you know, it's going to be my ideal play, as we see Cumberlane and Necrozma comes in, and Necrozma is definitely a threat and a half, since I really can't do anything towards it, necessarily. I go for Dragon Claw, and I do roughly 50%, as he goes for Rock Polish, Here's where I realize that I don't have any Pokemon that outspeeds him and I'm not in a good position. Uh, he's going directly for the Frozen Geisha and knock out my Karma O. And since Ladders can't come in because it's you know clearly slower, my only switching here was Tauros. This is the only Pokemon I know that can take a Frozen Geisha. And uh, <laughs> luckily I should say, uh, I found out later that he actually was C move. He doesn't do that thing and he was in range, but since I was the bulkier build with Tauros, I am fine of taking that damage. Uh, if not, you know, I would have been put in a spot basically. So, Scissor comes in, uh, I'm not going to make any big prediction here and switch out to my Cumberlane again. So I actually lose Tauros there, thinking that hopefully he will go for a Sword Stance, did not do that. So I'm going to send in Rexy and um, my idle play here would actually to be to go for Stellar Frog, but I was so scared of Bug Bite that I couldn't do it, as uh, we go directly with Hidden Power Fire, and I really, really was desperately, you know, I needed to have the Stellar Frogs on the field, because Incineroar is looking scarier and scarier at the moment when it comes in. So I'm going to switch in Neptunia, uh, my Dengenshi can effectively wall uh, Incineroar to some extent, but he predicts that double and go directly back to his Scissor, and this is really, really, really tough because this means I yet again have to maneuver around uh, against this sister because I really don't have an ideal play. Uh, I need to get super effective damage on either of these Pokemon and get them wheeled down to a spot. Since I have so many Pokemon in the bullet punt range, I don't look to be that good. Uh, now, here's the thing though, he went for actually Roost here as I went for a foul play predicting his sword stance. So that's clearly tough since that was my opening of getting Spore. I will do that now though, but now it's probably too late since Incineroar will of course have it yet again. The safety goggles. So we, we are not looking hot here. We are not looking hot at all. As I actually yet again will bring in Neptunia because it just soaks the damage that Incineroar can damage I put. Uh, it's basically a safer switch until I of course Mega Evolve, which I am forced to do now. And I really, really didn't want to, but anyway, here we, of course, go as he sucks his sex, his crustle. But 
yeah, we can go directly for a Diamond Storm and knock out the Crustle. And now his only two Pokemon left are actually the Mega Scissor and um, the Incineroar, and I have no way of dealing with them effectively. It will all come down to you know some kind of mind play. It's Page Hunt comes in. Um, I basically at this point, uh, the only play I really have in me is actually go to Cumberdale, hoping it does something weird, which is Sword Stance. And while I can't possibly take a Bug Bite, it is we're not gonna take a plus two Bug Bite. Luckily for me, he chose Case here by switching out that it doesn't have that, and that's both good and bad for me. The good part here is that we force him to switch out, the bad part is that Incineroar is back. Uh, and my best switch in here was Arexi. Um, I'm basically, you know, I'm trying to maneuver in here, as luckily he goes for Nurkul predicting the Enchi. Um, I really, really was trying to, and I really can't stress this enough, that he would switch out. He actually doesn't do that. He's actually going for a U-turn. He will definitely go for the dark move, which was my prediction. So I'm going to Neptunia. Uh, I know I can take a knockoff for sure. Is whether or not I can take what he goes for, which is the darkest lariat. And luckily for us, we are able to take that and we get the lead where we want to, knowing that he has to switch out to be able to win the games as he needs to preserve his scissor. I actually made a play, went for Hidden Power Fire, and that wrapped up the game. Yeah, this is basically a win for me as we will knock out the um, Scissor and then Incineroar comes in and it will die through Diamond Storm, no doubt. But all in all, it was very clear that Tid played his last part of the game a lot stronger than me and I barely win this one. While it is a 4-0, it is not a secure 4-0 since I have 4 Pokemons, of course, in range of Bullet Punch Kill. So yeah, all I really can say here, and I really, really gonna give Tid all the credit he deserves here. Um, first and foremost, you know, the Lando situation here, I've, I've debated it before about the Mesprit. Having Healing Wish here would have helped me tremendously. Uh, <laughs> it, it's actually on, you know, that level that, yeah, without that, I, I would have been able to save Lando, hence giving an honest chance to sweep throughout the game because um, Scissor was not a threat for Bullet Punch if my Lanners was at full health. I think while losing Lanners was a sum real, I do open up the game where Scissor becomes a massive threat towards my team and of course in the cross my play even worse than with Tauros also getting whittled down heavily. Uh, the thing is here that the cross my sadly do learn Flash Cannon. I couldn't send in the NG versus that, it, I was not able to, I shouldn't have been able to. And of course my opponent reveals afterwards that it was actually a seafood engage here, which would have been able to knock out Tauros and might very well actually swept my team from there. Or at least I would have been forced to actually play very weirdly with Mesprit. I think Mesprit would have won the matchup, but I don't think I would have been able to survive it that long with my team whittled down heavily, since Mesprit was probably only last stop against Scizor. And that's something that really is, um, it's not frustrating, that would be the wrong word, but I definitely felt I was put in a spot I didn't think I was going to be forced to be dealing with. Um, and quite frankly, Necrozma was a tremendous threat, and I think Tid was unlucky not to go for the C-move versus Tauros, thinking that he wouldn't be able to take um, you know, a full engager, since Tauros is usually not necessarily bulky. This Tauros was, and that's probably one of the exceptions. Uh, that said, you know, the last matchup with Incineroar and um, Scizor, it is very clear that um, Tid and I was in, a, I think, a mental state with whether or not the Wu predicted wrong first. And had it went for Flare Blitz there uh, and knock out my Daiichi in, in Sinner, go for Darkest Lariat, uh, I would have got Lando, I would go for an Earthquake, it is whether or not. Um, Tid would have to play in him to uh, predict that right afterwards. Since this was a switching, I would definitely most likely have sacked something versus that, uh, probably Lando. You know, it, it's all a predictions game, and whether or not we don't get to that spot, and I'm very lucky we don't because I think Tid is overall the struggle player in the end, and I definitely felt. Consider how the game starts, I'm feeling I played way worse in the end, and it was just because Tid is such a good late game player, and he really showcased that, I mean, Cinderor was definitely something else for me to be dealing with. With safety goggles, it just became a threat and a half, and I couldn't stop it. And that is what makes Tid so really good, it's basically it's what it does, and um, I was lucky to come up the top this time, and I really, really hope if I face him again that it just gets as tense as this one. Uh, so that's the guys, I really hope you enjoyed this game, I definitely did myself, and I really look forward to face Tid in playoff, if we do, 
Jeffrey Don't Lose on me before the finals, buddy. Uh, so that's it, I think, for always, of course, for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.